And now, here is Mike Gallagher. I hope you've recovered from the scandal yesterday. Holy cow, wasn't that breathtaking? We kept hearing how Sally Yates was finally going to blow the lid off the story of collusion between Donald Trump and his campaign and the Russians, the buildup. I mean, we were so excited it was going to finally happen, you Trump haters. You were just, you were just getting, you got your popcorn out and you were salivating. You were so euphoric. It was going to happen, right? It was going to happen. Sally Yates was going to finally explain. Let's get the, let's get the drum roll. Let's get ready. Here comes Sally Yates, former acting attorney general, fired because she wouldn't enforce the law, an executive order that was lawful. Yes. Yes, Sally, bring it, Sally. <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, they only, she only revealed one thing. Democrats are absolutely determined to try to keep this Russian story alive. And there's apparently nothing there. You think if there was something there, we would have heard it yesterday? You know what Sally Yates confirmed? That Mike Pence was evidently not given the, 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 the accurate story by Mike Flynn about his meeting with the Russian, about talking to the Russian ambassador. And you know what the Trump administration did as a result? You may not have heard this. They fired General Flynn. They let him go. Now, I'm not sure what else the Democrats want with General Flynn. Maybe they want him tried, convicted, hung, tortured, tarred and feathered. Uh, maybe he should run some laps around the, you know, the, the Washington Mall as like a penance. Give him 20 push-ups. I don't know what they want. Do you know how good this is for those of us who know that there's really nothing there? That the Russians didn't impact the election, that Hillary lost the election on her own? I mean, check this out. Here's here's the former acting attorney general, Sally Yates, with this big bombshell. Here's the bombshell. It was critical that we get this information to the White House because, in part because the vice president was unknowingly making false statements to the public and because we believed that General Flynn was compromised with respect to the Russians. Yeah, well, that's why the Trump administration let him go. I mean, this is, honestly, you should look at this in a very positive light because every time these guys go back to that well that is now dry, the well of Russia made Donald Trump president, every time they go back to that well, we win. Every single time. Coming up, we're going to chat with the great Michelle Malkin. She's going to join us from CRTV. She's working on some, some great stuff on uh, alien visas that I want you to know about, and I also want to get her take on the big fat nothing burger that was Sally Yates' testimony yesterday. Welcome in. we got a lot to cover today on this Tuesday edition of the Mike Gallagher Show. 800-655-MIKE is our number when you want to jump on board. You can also send a text to us to the MyPillow.com text number, which is also 1-800-655-6453. Michelle Malkin, the Democrats wailing about Russia. A video that you probably haven't heard about involving a group of uh, pool partiers and a 68-year-old woman in Florida, which is one of the most shocking, horrific things I've seen in a long time. But, of course, because it was black-on-white violence, we don't hear a whole lot about it, now do we? We'll tackle that and more all ahead here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Way on down south. Way on down south. London town. Mike Gallagher. I love the work that Michelle Malkin investigates is uncovering. It's her internet-based series on CRTV.com. She's senior editor at Conservative Review, one of the great uh, warriors in the fight as we fight the good fight. Michelle Malkin, welcome back to the Mike Gallagher Show. How you been, Michelle? Good. How about you? 
about you? Well, I'm just trying to recover from the shock of all the collusion and the Russian meddling that was uncovered yesterday by Sally Yates' testimony. Have you recovered yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, all we heard was, I, I mean, Michelle, they won't, they're not going to let this alone in trying to go back to this Russian collusion, Russian meddling well, one of the things one of the things Clapper said yesterday was, well, you know, they've been meddling for since the 1960s, the 1960s, huh? So, but it's an issue this time around. Why? Oh, that's right, because they can't accept that Hillary lost. Yes, that's right. And with the left, it's a constant drumbeat of assertion, repetition, speculation, paranoia, and you nailed it, Mike. It, it really is about the selective. Uh, that these people have only because it serves their political agenda, and that is to bring down Donald Trump. Right, that's it, and it's and the and it's it's getting worse by the hour. It feels, and every time I get discouraged, a listener will call me and say, "Mike, please don't get discouraged, don't get down. But you gotta you gotta stay up, you gotta stay on point because that's what they want. They want to beat us into submission." Um, where to to a point where anything positive that's said about the Trump administration is just met with with such derision and such um, just a vile reaction that people are afraid to say anything, Michelle. Yeah, that's right. And we have to remember that it is a marathon; it's not a sprint. And right. every day, these people are going to redouble their efforts on Capitol Hill, in Hollywood, on college campuses. And their modus operandi is to increase the ad hominem attacks. And they know that there are many capitulationist Republicans um, on Capitol Hill in Washington that are going that are going to give in. And that are going to throw um, the best and brightest people, the patriots in the Trump administration under the bus. They're relying on that. And in many ways, those people uh, who are, you know, ostensibly on our side are our own worst enemies. I want to get to your, your investigation right now in the dark world of these, uh, these this visa scam, these EB-5 visas. But before we do that, um, I, I also get frustrated daily with the refusal it seems, for, for people to want to have an honest dialogue about race relations in America. Uh, some, I heard somebody on TV last night say that former President Obama claimed that race relations are as good right now in America as they've ever been. Have, 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 you, heard, have you heard about the video of the, the 68-year-old white woman who walked into the pool party in Florida and was assaulted yes. by a group of black teenagers? Yes, I have. I've seen the video. It makes my blood boil, and it's not the only one out there. You see uh, many mobs, uh, whether they're social justice mobs um, or in inner cities or in neighborhoods like this, where there is outright and explicit racially driven violence. It, It is spinning out of control. And it certainly doesn't help that you have many divisive figures, leaders in the Democrat Party who are stoking this. I will note, Mike, that we just marked the 25th anniversary of the L.A. riots recently. That is where I cut my teeth as a journalist. I remember. And to have, and to have Maxine Waters being celebrated on Hollywood stages. She was one, on one of these award shows the other night. They're calling her anti-Maxine. She is now the one of the leaders of the resistance. This is one of the most poisonous racial demagogues um, who is leading the way. And, and we wonder why race relations are as bad as they've ever been. I can do, I can, I'm I, somebody, right? I, I can do you one better. In the New York Times the other day, they talked about one of the men who assaulted Reginald Denny, remember the white truck driver who was pulled out yes, of his I truck? Do. And the guy, the one guy actually celebrates the day that happened every year with a block party. He does like a barbecue yes. and, 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 and is, it's actually a celebratory thing because, after all, this is the resistance that I was part of. This is the guy that almost killed, yes. one of the guys that almost killed Reginald Denny. Yes, that's right. And one of those gangsters, um, Damien, one of 
of his name was embraced, literally embraced, by Maxine Waters, who did wow. the electric slide with the Crips and Blood wow. uh, dancing, essentially, on the graves and the ashes of, wow. of people who were targeted during the L.A. riot. Well, so you know, that, and, and all, that's uh, and, and all I'm looking for is an honest conversation. I mean, wh- white on black violence is horrifying. We ought to talk about it. But black on white violence is 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 every bit as horrible. And we ought to talk about that and acknowledge it. If a black woman had been assaulted like this, she gets slammed to the pavement of a pool at a pool party, thrown into the pool. All she wants is for them to turn down the, the music. And they laugh and they almost, I mean, they could have killed this 68-year-old woman if it had been a bunch of white teenagers that assaulted a black woman. I wonder how many times we'd be talking about it in the mainstream media, Michelle. We've lost all sense of decency, responsibility, moral order in this country. This is why Donald Trump was elected um, to restore that kind of order. And, And look, we just had an FBI report that was released last week, and this is very relevant and and connected to the discussion we're having, Mike, about the Ferguson effect on police departments across this country, the deep policing that is going on because dedicated officers who went into their line of business to protect and serve can't do it because of social justice hijacking. You know what's happening tomorrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Al Sharpton and his cop bashing crew are headed there because of the trial of Betty Shelby, who was involved in one of these unfortunate incidents, and they're going there to stir things up. Is there a police officer in this country that can do their job without having to worry that that mob is going to come and and, uh, sabotage their ability to do their job? And in the case of Betty Shelby and many officers like her across the country, sabotage their ability to get a fair trial in America? Well, she's the one also who sat down with 60 Minutes a week or, week or two ago, and I was so surprised because you don't often see that. Just broke down in tears when she, you know, she's a tough lady, but she said, listen, I, I can't believe, you know, everything that's happened. All right, we're going to follow that closely. I also want to f- talk about the dark world of EB-5. Tell me about your current investigation on CRTV.com's Michelle Malkin Investigates. Well, hey, thanks, Mike, for the opportunity. I want people to know that if they – are looking for more substantive coverage of the issues they care about, and in this particular issue, immigration enforcement and the visa programs that are so fraud-ridden in this country. We just put out an episode on EB-5. This is a program, shockingly, that sells American citizenship and green cards to the highest bidder. It's been in place since 1990, and it's become a bipartisan racket and boondoggle. People will remember that Terry McAuliffe, the Democratic uh, governor of Virginia, was involved in one of these schemes uh, selling green cards for uh, supposedly half a million to a million dollars to invest in an electric car company. It was a complete sham. Uh, Harry Reid was in- involved in one of these schemes where he leaned on an Obama DHS official, Alejandro Mayorkas, to reverse his rejection of an approval of one of these projects. And it involved, guess what, Harry Reid's son. Um, wow. We traveled to Vermont where Pat Leahy and Bernie Sanders, Mr. Class Warfare and, and uh-huh. anti-elitist himself, backed a, a program uh, of one of these things that, that uh, ripped off Vermont rural taxpayers to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. Wow. People have no idea uh, just what a scam it is, and we ripped the lid off of it in, uh, that, in my latest episode on Michelle Malkin Investigates. That's what you guys do, CRTV.com. Check it out, Michelle Malkin Investigates, her Internet-based series on CRTV.com. They're doing terrific work. you got to check it out. Michelle, keep fighting the good fight, my friend. Thank you, too. Appreciate you joining us. 27 past the hour. Our number is 800-655-MIKE. Have you seen this video of this woman who goes into a pool party? And it apparently took place in Lauderdale, Florida. It is so sickening and, and so just just horrifying to watch. And yet this isn't a big national news story. Why not? Could it be because it's black on white violence? Is that why we don't cover stories like these in this country? Let's dive into it next. 1 800 655 Mike. What you gonna do when she says goodbye?
I think Americans are fed up. Mike Gallagher on the problem of illegal immigration. I believe Americans are overwhelmingly resentful of people who sneak into America to take jobs, classroom space, to take space up in our emergency rooms. And have no health insurance, so we're paying the tax. Let's remember how Americans really feel about illegal immigration. Mike's back, and he's waiting for your call. 1-800-655-MIKE. Here's Mike. Getting a lot of emails from uh, listeners in the Tampa, Sarasota area. I'll be there later today. We're going to be broadcasting from uh, the Sarasota area tomorrow and on, what's to what, today? Tuesday? I guess we'll be there. Is today Tuesday? Yeah, so we'll be there tomorrow and Thursday. But the big event, the 100 Days of Trump Tour stop, is in Sarasota tomorrow night. If you listen to us in or around Sarasota, be sure to go to 100 DaysTour.com. The number 100, 100 DaysTour.com. You can click on that link there and get tickets. I'm looking forward to, to traveling to Florida. I'll be joined by the great Larry Elder from Southern California. Larry and I will be on a panel. We'll break down the first 100 days of the Trump administration, talk about the future. And, and listen, this is a subject that's near and dear to Larry's heart. And uh, 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 to have an honest dialogue about race in this country. And uh, as a black conservative, Larry has been on the receiving end of a lot of criticism and vitriol. It's a, you know, this is a horrible story. To see a 68-year-old woman attacked the way she was, and let me make sure you know the story if, you, if you're not aware of it. I, I mean, and I, 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 to, I want to talk about this in the context, the context of what President Obama says, because his assertion... And somebody said this last night on on TV that that he recently said race relations is as good as any time he's seen it in his lifetime. And I find that hard to believe, that anybody really feels that way. This this happened apparently in in, in Lauderdale, Broward County, Florida. And there's been an arrest made, thank goodness. Somebody got arrested. The problem is, I don't know how you don't arrest everybody in the entire party. This is a pool party that was taking place, apparently, in Florida. And a 68-year-old woman ventures into the pool party with her two little dogs on leashes. And she's apparently trying to get the young people, who happen to be black, to turn down the noise to turn down the music. There's a a 16-year-old guy who lifts her up high over his head. She is slammed to the pavement, to the concrete pavement. The two of them go down to the pavement. This is a 68-year-old woman on with two dogs. After she's slammed to the pavement, then they pick her up and they throw her into the pool, laughing, joking, I mean, I, it's it's an awful thing to watch, and I don't want to post it. I just don't. I don't want to post it at Mike Online. I don't want to post it on Facebook. To watch the violence directed to this woman is truly, truly sickening. You want to find it. It's, it's not hard to find online, but the problem is it's not a major news story, and I want to know why. Why is it that it feels like black-on-white violence is not treated the same way as white-on-black violence? And if you disagree with me typically, if you maybe you're left of center or you don't agree with my, my ideology or the way I view the world, can you dispute that with me? Can you tell me that I'm wrong, that black-on-white violence is just not given the same treatment in the media as white on black violence so this had been a black a 68 year old black woman with two dogs walking in uh, saying please turn down the music and they slammed her to the to the cement and picked her up and dragged her and threw her into a swimming pool it's amazing she wasn't killed amazing the dogs weren't killed news reports out of lauderdale florida say that um she was bruised she was injured but she will survive and there was an arrest of a 16-year-old guy. The video shows the party goers laughing at her, 
They all went running from the pool party after this happened. Yeah, it's real funny. Take the 68-year-old woman, slam her to the ground, throw her into the, into the water because she wants them to turn the music down. I mean, all I want is some even-handedness. I think it's fair to wonder why black on white violence is treated with kid, kid gloves. And if you think my assertion is wrong, please join me. We'll put you to the top of the line, as is our custom. 1-800-655-MIKE. 800-655-6453. Let's start with Henry. Also, if you can't get through, by the way, on our talk lines, you can text us your comments to the MyPillow.com text number, 1-800-655-6453. Hi, Henry. Welcome aboard. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me today. Sure, sure. I appreciate you joining us. So, um, just a little background. I'm, I'm a university student in Boston. I'm conservative. I've been to public, private schools. I'm, I'm at a private university now. Okay. And um, I'm sure you know that the, what's, Boston is a liberal, it's a, it's a liberal uh, melting pot. So oh, yeah. What, what, happens, what I find happens here when a conservative breaks out which, or talk, talks out in opposition to a liberal here is that there is liberal hysteria. And I think that since the vast majority of the news outlets in this country are either left or center or center, that the liberal hysteria manifests in racially raci- uh, racially biased media. Right. Well, I, and I don't, and that's funny because I don't hear a hysteria. I just hear an indifference. I just hear, oh well, you know, a bunch of black kids assaulted a sixty-eight-year-old white woman in Florida. Okay, you know, let's move along here. But if you hear a story of a black victim of, of, of white violence or white on black crime, it, there is an outrage. There is widespread condemnation. There is coverage, and I'm not saying there shouldn't be. I mean, it's horrible that anybody gets attacked based on race at all. And often you wonder, well, is this, is this racially based? Goodness knows, every time there's a white police officer involved in the shooting of a black suspect or a black citizen, it's the, what we hear morning, noon, and night on the news. It's a huge story. I mean, I mean that, that, seems, is it, that just seems insane to me, Henry. Hang in there. Keep your head up there in Boston with... Uh, at a at a, uh, a a university where your uh, your point of view is probably not exactly embraced with open arms. One eight hundred six five five Mike. What open line? Charlotte, you're next. Charlotte, how are you? Good. How are you, Mike? Great, great. What did you have? You seen this video? Yes, I have, and it's it's sickening. It's sickening. And like you said, if it was the other way around, if it was a white group of young people and did anything to a black person, it would be terrible. And like you said, it's terrible no matter who's involved. Right. It doesn't matter. It's sickening with the fact that the media doesn't cover this, and it gets it kind of gets buried. And I'm waiting. I never. I haven't watched The View in a long time. I'm going to watch this uh, this morning to see if they have anything. Yeah, see if they cover it. <laughs> Good luck with that. Because, they... because I Bay, Joy Behar is dumb as a box of rocks, and Whoopi <laughs> I have no respect for whatsoever anymore. Don't and torture. I, and this is from a person that was raised to think, and I am not a racist. I'll say that right now. And my mom t- and dad taught me there's good and bad in both. That's right. You treat other people the way you want to be treated. And, you know, the li- and if you can't say something good about somebody, don't say well, anything at all. Well, don't but hold you know your what? breath. I, don't torture I, yourself. Don't torture. Don't put yourself through the view because all, you all you'll do is pull your hair out. I mean, because truthfully, you're not going to see this in the New York Times. You're not going to see this in the Washington Post. You won't see, I mean, where's Van Jones? He likes to talk about, what, what, what was his phrase? The whitewashing of America when Donald Trump got elected? How about an honest dialogue about race, Van? Why is this not a huge story? And and it is, I'm not kidding you, the video is outrageous. Let me read some of the texts uh, that I'm getting. Here's uh, uh this, and, and if you, when you text us, by the way, you can sign sign your name to it so I can at least read your first ni- name. But uh, your first name. But here's one: Obama says race relations are as good as he's seen it. That means Obama thinks he's winning. Perfect. The left remains as blind as ever. Trump 2020. Um, 
Another one, Mike, I describe this as a hate crime. Why wouldn't the media? Uh, Here's Jan. I believe those young people were awful, but the American people would have heard about the terrible pool incident if the lady who was assaulted had been African American. So this is about an honest conversation. Is Barack Obama right? Let's listen to what the former president said. I am absolutely convinced that race relations on the whole are actually better now than they were 20 years. Yes, but we have greater awareness of where we're falling short than we used to. Really? Do we have greater? Well, here's, with all due respect, Mr. President, I believe we're falling short in failing to honestly converse about black-on-white violence in America, period. That's where we're falling short. Let's talk about race relations honestly, not with this one-sided view that the only kind of violence that's terrible is white-on-black violence. Violence is violence, and it's horrible no matter who's doing it. And we ought to be willing to talk about a group of... And someone told me that it was covered on Sean Hannity's show last night. These were, these were a group of honor students? Honor students? There was no honor in what happened to this woman. 800-655-MIKE. You've heard me rave about the My Pillow. How about that for Mother's Day? Get Mom a My Pillow. Mike Lindell's incredible creation, the best pillow I've ever slept on in my life. I've been on this planet 57 years, and I get so excited every time I get to tell you about the My Pillow. And the Mike Four Pack Special continues 50% off your order of four My Pillows, two premium My Pillows, two travel go anywhere My Pillows. Just go to mypillow.com. Use the promo code Mike G. Promo code Mike G when you go to mypillow.com. This is the pillow that never goes flat during the night. It stays cool. You can throw it in the washer and the dryer. And 50% off the Mike Four Pack when you go to mypillow.com. Promo code Mike G. MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Mike G or give them a call, 800-928-6034. Make sure you use the promo code Mike G, 800-928-6034. Use the promo code Mike G. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Promo code Mike G. I know there were a lot of people disappointed that Ted Cruz didn't get the nomination and become president of the United States, but man, we're so lucky to have him in the U.S. Senate. Um, yesterday, the fired acting Attorney General Sally Yates, with her big nothing burger, that basically her testimony confirmed what we already knew that Mike Flynn apparently didn't tell Vice President Pence about his contact with the Russian ambassador, so the Trump administration fired him. But to me, what was very compelling was Senator Cruz's interaction with Ms. Yates about why she defied President Trump's travel ban, and which led to her eventual dismissal. Are you familiar with 8 U.S.C. Section 1182? Not off the top of my head, no. It says, quote, whenever the president finds that the entry of any alien or of any class of aliens into the United States would be detrimental to the interests of the United States. He may, by proclamation, and for such period as he shall deem necessary, suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants, or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem appropriate. Would you agree that that is broad statutory authorization? I would, and I am familiar with that, and I'm also familiar with an additional provision of the INA that says... No person shall receive preference or be discriminated against in issuance of a visa because of race, nationality, or place of birth. That, I believe, was promulgated after the statute that you just quoted. Race, nationality, or place of birth, none of that applies. None of those three criteria apply to President Trump's executive order. It wasn't place of birth. It was where where the travel point originated doesn't mean that person happened to have been had to have been born 
from in Yemen or whatever country was on the, the seven countries that Barack Obama's administration determined was very dangerous and a breeding ground for terrorists. Didn't have anything to do with race. Didn't have anything to do with nationality. So here's an acting attorney general who's trying to tell a smart guy like Ted Cruz about what this what what this statute really refers to. In the over 200 years of the Department of Justice history, are you aware of any instance in which the Department of Justice has formally approved the legality of a policy and three days later the Attorney General has directed the Department not to follow that policy and to defy that policy? I'm not, but I'm also not aware of a situation where the Office of Legal Counsel was advised not to tell the Attorney General about it until after it was over. Wow. Wow. Uh, people who heard that ex- these exchanges seem to think Sally Yates performed well. She said nothing new, and there is no revelation about collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. So the good news is every time they go back to that empty well, trying their best to find an example of some kind of collusion or evidence of it, they fall short, and that's great for the Trump administration. Back to your phone calls, a lot of people reacting to this video of this 68-year-old woman uh, slammed to the pavement, thrown into the pool at a pool party in Florida. Hey, Stephen, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Um, Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sure can. Um, Well, I was just calling to say um, I I agree with you. That was outrageous and and disgusting. But the reason um, I think the media is not covering the uh, black on white is because white people don't go running out into the street and cause... Um, you know, disturbances and, and get the media. Oh, attention. sure they do. Of course they do. Have you seen some of these uh, young snowflake, violent uh, Antifa protesters on college campuses and, 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 no, and committing I mean, acts I mean, of talk, violence? Let me rephrase that. Yeah, I, I see okay. them. But, I mean, I'm talking about um, not on the left. Uh, pe- you know, I mean, people not on the left don't go and do that. I well, mean, part, of, part, of, part of our honest conversation about race ought to include – that, that bad people do bad things and assault people, whether and, and they can be white, they can be black, they can be Hispanic, they can be Asian. Uh, but, the, but to suppress black-on-white violence is a great disservice, a grave disservice, and doesn't do anything to further race relations. All of us ought to be acknowledging w- what, is, what is terrible, and that is an act of violence against a 68-year-old woman, and that's, that ought to be talked about. 